Hi there, it's Luke here again for the M5 Stack official channel. We've been looking at how to program games on the Core 2. The last week we saw the smiley face game. This week we're going to be looking at a little bit more of a complicated game. It's a whack-a-mole game. Let's have a look and see it in action. Let's see how we can get to programming it. You may or may not be aware that the regular M5 core devices such as the Go or Fire and the Core 2 have a very different graphics library. Core 2 is using little VGL which supports PNG. This is great for us if we want to make games because we can use PNG files which have a transparent layer mask so that we can easily blend layers over the top of each other. I've created a few assets for the game that we're going to make today and they're provided on the GitHub. So let's go ahead to the GitHub page where we can find those pre-prepared assets that I've made. Download all of those uh, and you can also download full code for the game if you wish to skip ahead. Once we've downloaded those files, let's go ahead and get into UI Flow. In UI Flow, what we're going to do is to set up the screen first. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, that the touch screen is not super accurate, so we're going to be using buttons since we're only going to be using nine locations on the screen where the moles are going to pop up. There are specific coordinates where we're going to put these buttons and you can see the coordinates for those down below. I'll just go quickly through this. Mainly we need to make sure that the width and height is 60 so it's easier for us to press and then we can enter the coordinates in like so. and I'll repeat this process for the rest of the buttons. One little tip here that some may not be aware of is if you double click, we can basically copy the last element that we created. This saves us the job of having to alter the width and height for every single one. All we need to do is to change the X and Y positions. And there we have it, our full grid of buttons is created. Now that we've done with the buttons, we can go on to the graphical elements of our game. So I've already preloaded these onto the device, so I can drag along the image, and they're all in here. Uh, if you haven't watched our previous videos, we can upload the PNGs from here. Okay, so I'm leaving the coordinates here for each of these layers. So essentially we have the top layer and that should go to 0 and set this to 2. When I was designing these elements I didn't create them to properly fit the screen so we have a little bit of a white bar at the top and the bottom but it's no big deal. Okay now I'll go on to the second image and what's important here is that we need to make sure that these top layers are on the same layer and the bottom layers are also on the same layer. And, uh, so that then when I add in the mole, so I'll set this to 15, this one to 14, because basically we want the mole to sandwich in between these layers like so. Okay. And now we'll go on to add the extra layers, just remembering that these need to stay on the same layers, okay? So I'll fast forward this bit and provide the coordinates down below. Okay, so that's our game board images all laid out. Now we'll just need to add in two extra labels. We'll have one on this side for the time and 
another on the opposite side for the current score. And I'll add in this third label, basically telling us to press the A button to start, and also we're going to display the score at the end of the game on this label. So I'll leave that blank for now. Okay, and now we can get to start with the coding. So of course we're going to need variables for this game. We're going to need the score. We're going to need the time uh, in minutes and seconds. I think what I'll do is basically I'll set the time limit to this game to about a minute and 30 seconds. And then what else we're going to need? We're going to need a boolean to check whether the state of play is currently happening. So also I'm going to need a X position and a Y position to generate my mole at different coordinates on the game board. Okay, and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of these positions into two lists so that we'll randomly select a row and a column for where the mole will appear next. So first we'll go into lists and then I'll go and call one of these rows Okay, and then another, we can call it columns. Okay. Duplicate these. So basically I'm going to use those same coordinates that I did for adding the buttons into here. Set the score to zero and set the minutes to one and I'm going to set the seconds to 30. Now we also need to set that game state to be a boolean. So I'm going to logic and then I'll set to false when it's not in the state of play. Okay, there we go. Okay, and now I'm going to set this label to blank because I don't want any text showing up at the start of the game when nothing's happened yet. Okay, so now we're going to start to create the logic of our game. So we'll create a loop first, of course, and then we're going to invite the player to start by pressing the A button. Then, of course, to start my main game loop, I want to change that boolean value to true when I press the A button. And then, of course, I want to hide this label because we don't want that showing over the top of our screen while we're playing. And, of course, when we start a new game, we want to reset all of our values back to the original. Okay, and now we're going to use a while loop. So all the things that happen inside the while loop are the game contents, what is happening while we're playing the game. So the game will only start when we press that A button for the first time. Okay, um, and of course we're going to want to show our score, so let's see, this is label 1. And we want to show the time, so I'll sort the workings of the time out later. All we're going to want to do is to make sure that we have the minutes and the seconds beside each other. So I can add these in from the variables, mins, and seconds, 
and then I'm going to add in a colon in the middle okay and that's going to show up in the top left corner so I think what I want to do first is to test the touch button functionality so we're going to button and then drag out this one here so if the touch button zero was pressed so touch button zero is here underneath my mole where it currently is so basically my mole is in the same spot as where my button is for testing so essentially what i want to do is to check if when i press that button is the mole in the exact same spot as the button so we can do that by dragging out the x pos and also y pos and a little bit of uh, comparator blocks here so if x pos is equal to 40 and y position 10 and an issue that i found out later on after coding my game was that uh, even after this game state, game state was set to false after the time ran out, I would find that I could still press the mole, therefore allowing the player to add more to their score even after the game had finished. So something else that I want to add in here is a check to see whether the game state is still in play. So what I want to do, of course, when I press on the mole is to increase the score. And basically we can, we can duplicate this now for all of the buttons on the game board, but we need to make sure that we set the coordinates to change for each of the buttons. So we can't see the buttons now, so that's why um, I provided the coordinates um, list at the start of the video so you can always skip back to that because now we need to duplicate these buttons and change the coordinates so well, you can see them here in the list as well so if the x boss is 135 and uh, the y pass is 90 okay make sure we change this to the button that it represents and then we can keep doing that so I'll speed this part up. Okay, now I've got all my touch button presses sorted. Now I want to make sure that my mole generates in a random position. So we go into variables and then over here set X pos and set Y pos and then into list. Okay, so in list uh, rows or columns get random okay and then we assign that to y pos and that to x pos and then we're going to need to set the image to appear at that location so set image x pos y pos Okay, so that means it's going to appear randomly in that list. And then when the coordinates are the same as the button that's pressed, we'll register a hit. So that's pretty much all we need for the process of the game to add a score, the play element. All I need to do now is to add in the time. So we'll go into logic and I'm going to create some simple logic to basically control the time so drag a bit of logic out here if uh, seconds is equal to zero okay and minutes to one so of course since i've got my score my minutes and my seconds to start off with minutes set to one seconds set to 30 but it doesn't know what a minute is so what we'll do is when the seconds are zero and there's still a minute, then we shall set the seconds up to 60 for the final minute of the game. So our time should function correctly there. 
also we need to add in the else if that if the seconds are depleted and also there's no minutes then we set our game state to false and of course in order for our clock to work we need to change the time so our timer will wait for a second and then change seconds by minus one okay and something i just observed here i realized that this is image two so i need to make sure that that's set to image two so because we don't want our terrain moving around and of course now if we escape this while loop because the time has run out like i said we want to show our score so we need to check if the score is more than zero uh, then we we set label two to show score and a little message you scored blah blah and of course we hid label two here so we need to make sure that it's shown again and if we want our user to have some time to view their score then we'll just have a little bit of a delay before it sets back to the start here and then it'll just cycle between showing press A to start and your last score and that's it for our game let's load it up and have a play you may have noticed that upon uploading not everything has appeared on the screen this is because it takes a while for all the elements to be drawn to the screen. Now we can press A to start and play the game. See what high score you can get. And that's about all we have time for in our video today. I hope you enjoy programming this game. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them down in the comments. As always, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.